Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to show you a vector exam question. So in this question we have O, A, B, C, a parallelogram, and we know that O to A is equal to vector P. We also know that O to C is equal to vector Q. Okay, so these are shown on the diagram over here. So O to A is labelled as vector P. Okay, notice how I've underlined it when I've written it down. That's just to show that it's a bold letter. Okay, it's a vector. There's also an arrow associated with the vector. Okay, so the direction is important. The direction from O to A is vector P, but if we were to travel in the opposite direction, so from A to O against the arrow, this would become negative P instead. Okay, likewise, if we look at vector Q, this is the direction of the vector. If we were to travel against the arrow, so from C to O, it would become negative Q. Okay, so that's useful to know. Also, something that's important with vectors, it's a parallelogram. So this line is parallel to CB, and it's also the same length. That means if this is vector P, so is this one. Okay, so you can write that on. Okay, so that's also vector P. So likewise, if you were to travel against the arrow, that would become negative P. So if this is vector Q, this line here, AB, is also vector Q because this line is parallel to the line OC and it's the same length, okay? So they have the same vector. So if you're traveling from A to B, it's vector Q. And if you're traveling against the arrow, it would become negative Q. So we know that E is the point on AB such that AE to EB is equal to 3 to 1. All that means is the distance between A and E is made up of three equal parts and the distance between E and B is just one part. So there are four parts all together along the line AB. So here's the line AB. Remember, we know that EB is just one part and A to E is three parts. So you could just mark roughly some lines along that line AB to show that there are one, two, three, four parts all together, three parts between A and E, and one part between E and B, okay? That will make things a lot easier, especially when you get onto more difficult vector exam questions. So we have to find OE in terms of P and Q in its simplest form. So we have to travel from O to E, okay, and work out the vectors. And it doesn't matter which way you travel. You can travel this way to get to E, or you can travel this way to get to E. As long as you simplify your answer, you should get the same thing either way. I'm going to travel this way, just because I think it looks a bit shorter and a bit simpler, but it really doesn't matter. So to get from O to E, I'm first going to travel along the line OA. So I'm going to write OA with an arrow above, just to show I'm traveling from, a, um, from O to A, and then, from A to E. So likewise, AE with an arrow above just to show A to E. So O to A, we already know that that is vector P. Okay, it's labelled on the diagram. So you can replace OA with P. And remember, we usually underline that bold letter to show that it's a vector. Okay, now to get from A to E, I'm travelling three quarters along the line AB. Remember, A to E is three parts, and there are four parts all together along the line AB. So if we're traveling three quarters along the line AB, you can then replace AB with vector Q. Because remember, we know that this line here from A to B is vector Q. Okay, it's the same as OC because it's parallel and the same length. We labelled it, labelled it at the start. So the last step would be to replace A to B with the arrow above it as Q. Okay, so now it's with its vectors P and Q. And it's in its simplest form. We can't simplify that. 
there isn't another P term or another Q term. So that's the final answer. It would also be correct if you wrote three quarters Q plus P, okay? As long as the signs are correct for the vectors and it's the same thing, that would be fine as well.